Hi, Mom. John, dear, did you register for your PVC? Not yet, Mom. I'm on my way to work. I'll do it then. Young man, did you register for your PVC? What? Why is everyone asking me that? The deadline is 30th of June. John, did you register for your PVC? What is going on today? The website is cvr.inacnigeria.org. Please register today or you're fired. Doc, what? I'm kidding, but please register. We're happy to report that John has finally scheduled his appointment for his PVC. What about you? Go to cvr.inecnigeria.org today. The deadline to register is the 30th of June. Hurry! But my grandma, like, it killed my grandma, so that's why I'm very, very scared of it. I don't like it. For any way I say this, I'll run. I don't want anything to even touch me. Even in terms of war, people use bill against their enemy because of how deadly B is. Entered her ears, so like that was what led to her death. So I really don't like this. But B will not look for you. They will not look for your trouble. But when you look for their trouble, they will give you trouble. They are one of these stubbornness, very wicked ants that we can think we can talk about of. But I see the honey, I will lick it, but I will not allow the bees to touch me. <laughs> No. From Triple E Media, I'm Ramat Mohammed, and this is The Backstory. These are very, very good insights for the society and for the human, human being entirely. Bees are not supposed to be feared. Bees are beneficial to our existence. But there is Friday the 20th of May is World Bee Day. This day has been designated by the United Nations as a day when we remind everyone around the world about the roles that bees play in our ecosystem. And a lot of people, and you heard some of their comments in the beginning, a lot of people are afraid of bees. But it turns out that that fear is exactly what can kill us. On the one hand, fear can agitate the bees and cause them to attack us. And on the other hand, if we attack the bees and their environment, we will cause our own death. In this episode, we ask the question, should we be afraid of bees? And why do we even need bees in the first place? What are bees good for? Miriam Muhammad is here to explain. In order for me to get an answer to that question, should we be afraid of bees? I reached out to Dr. Samuel Ola Golding, I'm a medical doctor, I'm a family physician with special interest in preventive health education, which I... Dr. La Golding told me that bees only attack when they're afraid of what you're coming to do to them. So basically, when a bee stings you, it's being defensive. If you don't, you know, approach bee in such a way that it will feel threatened, it is not going to sting anybody. So for those people who are afraid of bee, the fact that when they see B, they start running or they start, you know, uh, making uh, what you will call a, 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 a agitation that is going to make the B to be afraid, then they get stung. Now, it turns out that after a B stings you, it will leave this thing called a stinger. The stinger looks like a needle. It's very sharp and pointy. That stinger is filled with venom. Venom is a poisonous substance produced by the bee. When that venom enters your skin and then into your bloodstream, it can cause some reactions. And that's why it's really important that you immediately remove the stinger after a bee stings. Otherwise, inside the stinger, there are more and more of the, the poison of the venomous substance that will continue to go into the person's skin. So when you remove the stinger, then you have reduced the chances of more of the poison getting into the system. 
So once you remove it, the best place is to rush to wherever there is soap and water and wash the site. Once you use soap and water and wash the site, it can reduce the effect of the venom of that in your bee. According to Dr. La Golding, even after you wash the site with soap and water, it is important that you rush to the nearest clinic or hospital. Because if you wash the area with the water, if the amount of venom that has already gone into you is enough to create all sorts of, you know, symptoms like, you know, nausea and vomiting, dizziness, breathlessness and so on, they will quickly give you anti-anaphylactic or they give you anti-inflammatory drugs in the hospital. Or they might even go as high as giving you some steroid injection so as to be able to minimize the effects of this uh, of the venom in you. That's the first thing to do. Now, if the venom or poison has entered your bloodstream and it is not quickly removed, then there are certain symptoms that you will experience after a bee stings. For instance, the place will start swelling up naturally. The person may start feeling dizzy. The person may start feeling this uh, nausea or even start vomiting. All these things will happen in the first few minutes of it or being stung. So if you do not remove the stinger in time and the venom or poison has entered into your bloodstream, then things can get very serious. You could go into what is called an anaphylactic shock. This anaphylactic reaction might lead to several things. It's not dead straight away. It could be that the anaphylactic reaction may affect the lungs, it may affect the liver, it may affect the kidney. In most cases, if you attack the kidney, it's going to shut the kidney down. And from there, you know, a lot of things can happen. But the one that is mostly done is the one that has to do with the breathing because it can reduce the breathing, it can even shut the person down. You know, that's the way the person can, you know, die. That's the reason why it is critical to rush immediately to a hospital after you have removed the stinger and washed the area with soap and water. Also, if you've been stung by a bee before and you've had a severe reaction, then you need to stay as far away as possible from bees. If the bee stings the person, the first time, it's going to have a sort of, uh, it's, it's normal immune response of the person that will keep the remembrance of that bee venom. So if the person gets tongue again, then it will, the body will now react to that, you know, new sting, new venom that is just coming in, and that can now result into the anaphylactic reaction. Dr. La Golding told us that about 10 to 20% of people can get the anaphylactic reaction to a bee sting. So while most of us will develop only mild symptoms to bee stings, others may not be so fortunate. For example, one of the voices you heard in the beginning of this episode was a woman whose grandmother died from bees that entered her ear. We then asked Dr. Lagolding to explain how her death came to be. Yeah, if, if bee enters the ear, the problem that can happen is even much more than what you know anyone could have told you because our ear is so sensitive. If that bee gets its, its, its way into the, the deeper you know, ossicles, that's the tiny bones at the end of the ear, that is where you find the real drum that makes you to hear. If the bee gets into that place and is able to inject that place with any of its venom, it is going to go directly to the brain. And the effect on the brain is more devastating than the effect on ordinary body. So the person could first of all go into a series of you know, uh, mental uh, activity that you may, they may not even associate with that bee sting. Then the destruction that will be going on in the base of the skull might lead to the death of that person. Uh, but not everyone who gets stung will have a severe reaction like an anaphylactic shock. For example, people who live with the bees, like the beekeepers, they do not experience a strong reaction when stung. And sometimes they may not even get stung at all because the bees are familiar with them. Because there's something like pheromone that the bees can perceive from an individual who has been living with, who it has been living with. So for, that's why you find some people, they will be breeding bees and the bees will not sting them. Do you understand? They will not wear any protective gear. 
these people, the pheromone that comes out of their body, the bees already been able to analyze it and know how friendly they are to, to, to them. And so they will not attack them. If you don't agitate the bee and you want to use bee as a sort of business venture, you have to learn certain things that you do that will not agitate the bee. It is really important that we learn how to live together with the bees. We learn how to not agitate them because without bees, human beings will not survive. When we were doing research on this, we found this quote that if we got rid of all the bees in the world, humans will only have four years to live. Now we're not exactly sure who said it or even if it's true, but we do know that bees are really, really important for our species and other species on earth. If bees will go into extinction, human beings will be affected. The reason is that about two thirds of food that we eat, the food that we consume, the crops that we do and we cultivate, comes from only bee pollination. Without bee pollination, we cannot get all these crops because all these crops we know we will not set fruits. For example, now we have um, cashew, mango, vegetables, and, 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 and fruits generally. They are all pollinated by bees. That's Dr. Liadi Muiding Teller. I'm a specialist and expert in beekeeping technology. Dr. Teller is passionate about the bees and how important they are to us. Most of us know that when we go to plant things like maize, cashew, all we have to do is plant the seeds. But where do the seeds come from in the first place? It turns out that we get seeds from pollinators. Bees are pollinators. They help plants reproduce in one of the most mind-blowing ways. Plants, just like humans, they have male and female reproductive organs. And just like humans, they cannot reproduce without fertilization, meaning that the male and female reproductive organs have to come in contact somehow. But we know that plants cannot just get up and move. So that's why they need help from pollinators like the bees. Now, when a bee lands on the male reproductive part of the flower, some pollen, which is some kind of yellowish powdery substance, it sticks to the hairs of the bees. That same bee will then fly to another flower and deposit the pollen into the female reproductive organ of that second flower. When this happens, the second flower becomes pollinated. At this point, fertilization has happened and a fruit can develop. That fruit will obviously have seeds, which we can then plant to get more trees. So bees are really important because if they don't help produce fruit, we can't get seeds. And if we don't have seeds, we're dead. All life will actually die. So it's really critical that we conserve the bees. We have to enlighten farmers in Nigeria. We have to enlighten Nigeria that we should try to conserve our bees. Because many farmers, they keep bees with chemicals. They destroy bees, they destroy their nests. And we have only hunters. Only hunters, when they go into forest, they also kill our bees. Some people use According to Dr. Teller, some people use chemicals to harvest honey. Some use fire to harvest honey. Some people set their nests ablaze in order to get honey from them. Doing that not only gives bad quality honey, but it also destroys the bees. And there are ways to harvest honey without destroying the bees. Bees can be handled in a way where they can actually work for you and give you an income for many, many years. And if you're thinking about getting into the business of beekeeping, the first thing to do is to seek knowledge. The best thing is just to contact a beekeeper, a good beekeeper. When you contact a good beekeeper, I tell you what to do. And, do and that's exactly what we did. We contacted the farm here in Abuja and we visited the apiary. Now, an apiary is where bees and their hives are kept. We are heading to the farm to see some bees mm. and hopefully not be stung. <laughs> the name of the farm is SCL Farms and BHF Agroforestry Project 
and it is located in Yangoji. Yangoji is about an hour's drive southwest from Abuja city center. So the whole Triple E team went on a road trip to visit the farm and see the bees. When we got to the farm, we were welcomed by Mr. Samuel Kwasari. Mr. Kwasari is the farm manager. He told us he was not an expert with the bees, but that he was going to be delivering us to those trained to handle the bees. So you are welcome. Thank you Thank very you much. Hey, we have uh, these guys. This is the department to answer all your questions. Okay. Barnabas, please come. So the farm had a limited number of bee suits, and the first thing we had to do was decide who was going to wear the suit and walk into the den of bees. Join us next week to find out who got to wear the suit and what we found out about running an apiary as a business venture. For this episode, we relied on the contributions of so many individuals. Thank you to all the people who gave us feedback about your fear of bees. And a very special thank you to Dr. Samiu Ola Golden and Dr. Lea Di Muadin Tella for granting us interviews and sharing your expertise with us. Thank you to Mr. Samuel, Kwasari, Barnabas, Godwin, and all the members of the SCL Farms and BHF Agroforestry Project over at Yangoji for taking us on a very safe tour of the apiary. The Backstory is a Triple E Media production. Production copyright 2022 Triple E Media Productions. If you enjoyed this episode of The Backstory and you would like to hear more, go to our website at 234audio.com to play the sample content. Then download our app from the Google Play Store for even more episodes. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel at 234 Audio to watch the video for this episode. Make sure to click the notification bell, like, and leave a comment. Our episodes can also be found on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, or wherever you get your podcasts. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment. This episode of The Backstory was produced by Ramat Mohammed. Miriam Mohammed, Lucky Usama, Alexandra Gekpe, Uche Mba, Dominic Tabakaji, and Sam Tabakaji. Executive producer Ramat Mohammed. Special thanks to Mala Iwa Bado Ikaleku. I'm Ramat Mohammed. See you next week.